G'day cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. And today's video is going to be the breakdown of the new Bluey season 3C episode, Relax. This episode of Bluey is called Relax. I'm super excited to share with you guys all of the really interesting things that I found in this episode. The Easter eggs, the Aussie references, the callbacks to other episodes, as well as a breakdown of like a lot of the stuff that Chili had that was Easter eggs, the music Easter eggs, and of course the location, which was really, really cool to try and figure out. And funnily enough, after last week's episode, exercise and like the controversy about that and like whether it'll be censored or changed and all that sort of thing, I thought this week's episode would be perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. But there's actually one line in it that I know with a hundred hundred percent fact that Disney is going to either cut out or ask them to refilm. And it was so funny because I can't believe that they did it again because this has actually happened twice before, this exact same line that Disney has made them change. So I'm going to be talking about that as well towards the end of the video and what that scene is compared to the other two episodes where Disney also censored the exact same thing. Also, before we get started, this is a giveaway video. So we are going to be giving away your choice of a bluey plush, any bluey plush that you would like. However, you do have to be over 18 to enter and you you must have Amazon available in your country. Now to enter, you have to be able to find my Papal long dog Matilda. I'm going to hide her three times during this video. So to enter, you just need to comment down below her three locations behind me during this video to enter. And I will announce the winner on Saturday with we do our live stream watch along of the episode Stickbird. Now, let's get started with the location information first for this episode, because it was something a lot of us were trying to figure out when we first saw like the teaser trailers for all of this. and. My guess is based on the trees, the cargo ship, and the general location of this, and the fact that they could drive there in their car, I'm pretty sure this is around Maroochydore, which is in the Sunshine Coast, which for those of you who aren't from Australia or from Queensland, that is north of Brisbane. So Nana lives in the Gold Coast, which is south of Brisbane. So of course, if they were going down there, surely they would have just stayed with Nana. We have seen them go north before to Noosa, as well as Perrigan Beach, which is where the original beach episode was. So Maroochydore is just a little bit further south than that, and it makes sense as well that it might be around there or maybe even just a little bit further down because the cargo ship that we see is usually what you see as it's coming in towards Brisbane just south of there. So for me a lot of that makes sense. I do think when I was googling it it might have been based off the Beach Towers Hotel. A lot of the side-by-side -side images kind of match up. Spa matches up as well as the glass balcony as well overlooking the beach which was really hard to find. I looked through a bunch of different hotels to try and see if I could pick this out. So I feel like maybe that might be it. Of course they might say it in the podcast later on today exactly where it is and if they do I'll make sure I add that into my breakdown of the top fun facts from the podcast for tomorrow's video. The only thing pulling away from this is the bins, the wheelie bins. At the very first scene, we can see a shot of the wheelie bins at the hotel and there's a blue one. That only exists in New South Wales. So I guess it's possible that they went all the way down there, but then it doesn't work with the cargo ship in the trees. So I don't know what they were going on with picking out the bins. If someone maybe just Googled recycling bigs and like the Sydney version of them came up instead of the Queensland versions. Who knows? Now, the second thing I want to talk about though is the music. And some of you cheeky dogs also spotted this when we were watching on the live stream. So there are two kind of cool music Easter eggs in here. The very first one is the very first intro scene where the girls are singing Flying Saucer. Two little men in a flying saucer. Two little men now this was already a short over on the Bluey YouTube channel, which unfortunately isn't available in Australia and I don't understand why. But we have seen the girls singing this before and of course that's the exact same song they were singing in the intro scene as they were driving into the hotel here. The second really cool music thing is at the end of the episode and some of you might have recognized this song called Simple Gifts. So Daniel O'Brien, who helped compose this sort of version of Simple Gifts for this episode, actually uploaded this already onto his Instagram account. Definitely go and check him out. But here's the side by side of him playing it on the accordion versus what actually happen for the end part of the episode. <laughs> honestly a really gorgeous scene and again of course Chili just taking that moment to really relax and be in the moment which was beautiful. It was kind of her version of Born Yesterday with Bandit looking at the leaf, it was her looking out to the beach. Now of course this is an easter egg video as well so we have to talk about the easter eggs that we found and there was only one of our traditional ones that we found and that was the long dog. So if you did spot it, it was in the kitchen when Chili was looking for the dishwashing tablets in the cupboard, the little long dog was yeah, just behind the plates. We did also have some other cool little background elements that 
that I want to touch on. So Chili's hat that she's wearing at the beach is the exact same hat that we saw her wearing in the first beach episode. We of course also see Floppy, which is Bingo's favorite toy from Sleepy Time and other episodes. And the green octopus makes a return again. And in case you didn't know, you can also get the green octopus in real life. It comes as like a set pack with Chloe as like an octopus action figure starting pack. The other really funny background thing I thought was in the bathroom where they had a live, laugh, surf poster, which of course is a kind of like a bit of a parody on the live, laugh, love kind of idea. Which again is also that idea of like meditation and mindfulness and being in the moment. So I thought that was a really funny little background detail that they added in. Now the next thing I really want to talk about is Chili and some of the stuff involving around her with the Easter eggs references and just everything really. So the first one of course is the book that Chili is reading which kind of also gives away with like the message of this episode. Wherever you go that's where you are. Be mindful and meditate on where you are and enjoy that moment and relax in that moment. So let's have a little bit of look at the book though. So on the back we can see the author and we've seen this author picture pop up a few times and it's kind of like a reference to two different things. So the first one of course is the dog looks a lot like Mr. Peabody. It's it's got the bow tie, it's got the glasses, it's that very classic dog animated look for Mr. Peabody. However, because it is on the book, there's also been a bit of a reference before to Rugrats and Dr. Lipschitz. And the fact that like in Baby Race, Jilly was also reading a lot of books that looked like this. And again, it's sort of like that idea of like reading a book from the same author who's gonna help you with your life, which happened a lot in the episodes of Rugrats. And of course, Dr. Lipschitz also has like that same kind of look with like the glasses and everything like that. Now the front of the book cover, however, it looks like an apple and there wasn't really a lot I could find. The only possible reference could be the Happy Apple, which is a 1959 book about, you know, being happy. So maybe it could be a play on that. However, the one line that Chili actually reads out, wherever you go, there you are, that's an actual book about mindfulness and meditation. So I think that's really funny that they've actually pulled the name of the title of the book and said like, that's the title of chapter one. When yeah, it's a book about mindfulness and meditation, which is something that Chili is attempting to achieve with great difficulty in this episode. Some other kind of funny details with Chili is of course, she says duck cake, when she realizes that she forgets the after sun. And I love that they use the word duck cake because it rhymes with like other swear words and that's like the bluey verse version of it. So I think that's super appropriate for a children's show. I also love that in the subtitles, you see that Chili growls. Like she doesn't humph, she's not grumpy, but the subtitles literally says growls, which of course is a funny little dog joke. And of course, let's talk about the Disney edits that's gonna happen with this episode. And you might not have noticed this. I only noticed because of course, I go into great detail with these videos and I've done a lot of the censorship stuff before in previous videos. So it's the crazy line. So when Chili walks into the girls and seeing them playing with the recliner and she goes, oh, you girls are crazy. That, that line's gonna change. So it's already happened before. It happened in Mr. Monkey Jocks when they said that he was going crazy. They actually re-recorded the lines to say he's going bananas instead. And in the episode Mini Bluey in the recent season three episodes, the line of the girl saying you're crazy was completely cut. So I'll show you that here. <laughs> you look crazy. Follow me. <laughs> Ugh. So, Disney's already done it twice. There's no words around crazy whatsoever in the Disney version. So without a doubt, they will probably either cut this or at least maybe change that line and get Melanie Zanetti to re-record it. Which makes me, I don't know, I find it really interesting that they added it in when they know that Disney has done this before and made them change it. So why, why bother, I guess? But. In case you're wondering, that's probably the line that Disney's going to cut. Now, let's talk about the Australian references as well in this, because we did have a few really fun ones. The first was dingleberries, which is an Australian slang word for someone who is foolish or silly. And then we also had references to a pie in the oven, which definitely I feel is a meat pie, because that's our type of pies in Australia. And of course we see Bandit unpacking the esky. Yes, we say esky in Australia. I know in other countries you have a lot of different words for this one little icebox contraption, but I do love that it's got like kind of the yellow paw print on the bottom of it, whereas in Australia, Australia, it usually either says esky or it has like the little red triangle depending on where you get it from. Now, another thing I want to talk about, of course, is the girls being fancy ladies and their nicknames and those whole scenes, which were just so funny. So we do get two new nicknames for the girls. We have Olympia and Melinda. And Melinda, I don't think is really a reference to much. It's probably just a fun name. But Olympia, of course, follows along the previous nicknames of being sort of pulled from Greek mythology. So, you know, we've had Telemachus before and a bunch of other ones, but they've used a lot of Greek mythology for nicknames. And of course, Olympia is no different. It means from Mount Olympus, but it can also mean like heavenly or heaven-like, which I feel like is what the girls are feeling like. They feel like they're in heaven after having that cool bubble bath in the spa. They're enjoying their lives. It's like heaven. So I love that they use that nickname. We also, funnily enough, have another like reference at the very end credits. So only once before have we seen someone go over like the credits 
this and that's the grouchy granny from Granny Mobile. But the girls in this, because they are also too fancy to bother with credits, walk over the top of the credits as well. So I thought that was a really funny little like end scene. I do also have to give a shout out to Bandit in this. One being a spectacular dad as well as just husband and how he supports Chili and her need to relax in this. Beautiful, super heartwarming and just what every mother would really love. But there is like a really funny little thing that he does in the elevator. So when he's trying to tell him like, you know, we're on holidays, he does the full like shimmy shake kind of thing, which I thought was just so funny and like a nice little like addition onto it to show that like he's ready to let loose and that it's a vacation. So I thought that was a really cool little detail in case you might've missed it. And then one of the last things I really want to talk about, of course, is the episode callbacks in this. So aside from, of course, Chili's beach hat being from beach, the girls are all dressed up as mermaids again, which again is a really great tie-in and reference to the previous beach episode where they were focused on being a mermaid or Bluey specifically was focused on being a mermaid the whole time. So I love that kind of tie-in again. And of course, Bingo's voice in the bathtub. She's got her husband voice on again, which we've heard before. No worries, babe. I'm real, babe. Oh, you sing so well, babe. And that just like made me laugh out loud and I loved it. And of course, again, another kind of like mini Louie reference here of Bingo doing the ee face where, you know, she's pulled her mouth back. The teeth are like really out there. And I loved the comparison of her doing it and then her mum, Chili, trying to copy her later on to get that inner joy that you can get from being a child and doing something silly. <laughs> I thought that was just beautiful. And it was also the one point that my son actually laughed out loud during this episode is when he saw Chili do it. Not so much when he saw Bingo do it. So I thought that was really cool. And it's interesting that like that's the moment that maybe some children will pick up on. Overall for me, this episode is probably a 4.5 out of five long dogs. <sighs> It was hard. I would have given it a four out of five, but I do really love the parenting message in this one. Again, it's a very kind of chilly based episode with also showing the girls having a lot of fun. So it's, you know, kind of switching over from the last episode exercise where we focus more on Bandit. This one we're focusing a bit more on Chili. It's hard to unwind as a parent and as a mother because you are just go, 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 go all the time and you just want everyone else to be happy and you want everyone else to also relax. But then it when you get the chance to do it yourself, it's all like, ah, oh, I kind of miss everyone. I don't really know what I'm doing. Like we saw that with Chili and I thought that was just so beautiful that the idea that like you need to sometimes take a step back and also learn from your children. They can teach you something too about relaxing and having fun and just being in the moment completely. And that's totally what we saw with Chili. I also love like the teamwork between her and Bandit as well of like him supporting her in this kind of situation. I loved that so much. And of course the message was very on the nose of like wherever you go, that's where you are. Like that, you know, take a moment, stop and smell the flowers, relax where you are, learn from your children, just embrace that inner child and that like wonder that you have when you see something new and fun like a hotel room. Also I love that they sort of pulled on the fact of like this is a very mid-range budget kind of like hotel unit. Probably not something that Stripe or Trixie would stay in considering that we know they're a little bit more wealthy so I love again that kind of show the wealth level I guess of Bandit and his family which is really interesting but it's just something really cool to note I thought. So Cheeky Dogs remember this is a giveaway video you have about one week exactly to enter so you have to put down below the three locations that you saw my long dog in and if you get all three locations right then you are in the draw to win a special bluey plush of your choice from Amazon. And again, you have to have Amazon in your country and be over 18 to enter. With that being said, Cheeky Dogs, I have picked you out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch and I will see you all in another video. Mwah. Bye!